try and do today, I suppose, is put up a few, a few pointers. Stuff that I've certainly encountered over a period of time, stuff that we believe as an organization around people, around talent. I, I always look for those things that help me and the teams I work with focus around, so what really creates energy in organizations? Um, what allows individuals and teams, I think, to succeed? And one of the biggest challenges as you kind of creep up the corporate ladder is that you get old. You get middle-aged spread. But most importantly, you're not green. And I don't mean green as in sustainability green, but your ability to absorb and learn new things. So if I could leave at least two things with you. One is the longer you are green, okay, the more you will prosper. And that is about taking in a whole load of influences, which I'll speak to just now, and building networks. In other words, regenerating who you are and the organizations that you're in. We'll come back to that. The second is, of course, once you're ripe and you get to my point, the only way to go is down. So avoid the second and stick to the first for as long as you can. And I, I don't mean that in a facetious or in a jocular manner, really. It's quite serious because what we find, irrespective of where we are in the world, that if you're not going to remain fresh and open to ideas, this is what happens. That we become risk averse, we manage risk. Organizations end up putting guys at the top. And yes, we talk about breakthrough and leading strategies, etc. But one of the critical challenges we have is to be risk prone. And what do I mean by risk prone? Not to be foolhardy and jump out of windows without parachutes and stuff like that, but more importantly, being able to use a combination of factors that include, that include intuition, I'll come back to that later, that allow you to make decisions that push the envelope. Now, at the top of the pile, what are we responsible for? We talk to shareholders and they want to know when they're going to get what return and all of those wonderful matrices that we use. But what that does is it, it, it almost forces us to want to balance things all of the time. And so if you move to the next layer, which is, and I'm hopefully not being patronizing to anybody, where a number of you might well be, hopefully as young rising stars, this is where you've really got to create and use your creativity to take risk. There is no one who sits at the top of an organization, unless you're a Steve Jobs, or for half a dozen other guys, who's really going to think, the guy talked about boxes, who's going to break the boxes and kick out boxes, because invariably we end up saying, so what's the return, what should the return be, how should we measure that? Well, maybe we shouldn't say that, and we should bite our tongues. I, if I could use a small illustration, it's great when a kid says to you, oh, I don't like you, you look fat. <laughs> Kids this young. Now, I'm not saying be rude, but they tell it as they see it. So I would urge one thing in your career. When you're in the middle, challenge. Challenge us. Not from a position of form, but from a position of substance. So when you sit there in the middle, please take a risk. Challenge. Ask. Develop networks that do precisely that. And as I say, please from a position of substance because there's nothing more frustrating sometimes. And somebody just says, because, just because, when they've not bothered to understand the substance of what they're dealing with. Now, as you lead people, they will challenge you. You must push up, push against the rest of us older guys as you challenge us to challenge you to grow more. I'll come back to that in a second. We talk internally about making the investment. Um, like all organizations, we run talent management as almost a science these days. And many people ask the question, so what happens if somebody you've invested in ups and leaves and goes elsewhere? Don't you feel you've lost? Yes and no. By the way, Hazel, I know they said you're great. I'll leave my card for you. <laughs> But more seriously, this has been a dilemma we've had, not only in South Africa, but globally for a very long time, where we all want to find ready-made. And the truth is, there isn't anyone who's ready-made. You're still going to have, have to get them to take on your culture, your organization, your challenges, etc. So we're quite satisfied 
about this. If we can't retain you for the right reasons, you have a right to leave. And that can't just be about the cash. Cash is important, don't misunderstand me. I really think for performance organizations like ours, if you're not paid at a reasonable market rate, it becomes a hygiene factor. So it's got to be beyond the cash. What is it beyond the cash that makes you feel you want to stay? And by the way, if you do me a favor the next time you move to a new job and record exactly what you say when you're being interviewed and you're being ordered the, offered the job, lots of smiles, it's this, it's smile, it's happiness. Relook at that tape six months later, okay, and ask yourself how you feel. And then once again, a year later. But remember what inspired you to take the job in the first place. And what you have done, what investment you have made in creating that opportunity as a real one for yourself, rather than just kind of riding the side. If you ever come across an entity in your organization that's having difficulty, please volunteer to join. What you will learn in fixing something fixing businesses is extraordinary. What you will experience is phenomenal. If you've not fallen on your face at least three times, at least three times, I'm not so sure you've got all the scars you really want. And I don't mean literally on your face. I can see someone to my right kind of going horrified. <laughs> what I am saying is what we learn through the process of difficulty and not for the sake of difficulty, I think enriches us in many ways. So, whether it's been you being part of a team that's had to close down a factory, okay, very tough. Putting a hundred people out of work, really tough. Knowing that those people might never get a job in that area again, okay. Learning that, not just the legal process, but what it feels like closing down an entity that we say is no longer economically viable is one of the most important things that you learn. And then the last one, of course, is whichever way I look at it, I say to my executive team, if you look five years hence, why should we have, have these jobs? Who should have taken this from us? And so in our talent management process, we really try and do two things. Not only identify people who you, we call here rising stars, but people who are hungry. People who truly are hungry to do things differently. Come on, move next one. So what do we say to all of them? The fish will never jump in the boat. Anybody who says to you, business is going to walk through the door ever, ever, ever again in any part of the world, they're, they're having you on. So we try and say to our people, you have to be hungry, which means you've got to go fetch it out there. It's not going to come to you. And fetching it, uh, one of my banker friends who runs Deutsche Bank says, what he's found fascinating between 2007 and 2010, 11, was that a lot of the guys who we'd been in banking with didn't know what it was like when business wasn't walking through the door. So when we said to them, well, you've got to go out there and go fetch it, they said, what does that mean? I mean, clients don't want our cash. No, they don't want your cash. We've got to go and convince them as to what we can do for them. In all of our careers, we're going to go and have mine. I've got to go fetch it. It's not going to walk in. Dry your eyes. If you dwell for too long on something that's gone wrong, you're not gonna move. Dry your eyes, learn, and move on. And it's the road to success is always under construction. Um, that's a motto I live my life by. I've done a number of things, but the road to success for me has always been under construction. And when something is under construction, you're constantly working at it. There is no time to simply chuck things out. So when you look at Tiger, our talent management, our people, we say this to them. If you've not moved through three cycles, then maybe you're not challenging yourself enough. If you want to move after one cycle, maybe you're in a hurry and you've got to kind of deepen that experience. But work at it, broaden it, and above all, enjoy it. Thank you very much.